Today we're going to be talking about removing and protecting filled mason bee nesting materials. So this part of raising mason bees is really important because there's a common pest for mason bees. It's called monodontomeris. It's also known as mono for short. It's a very small parasitic wasp that attacks developing mason bee larvae. And I've got an example of some that I found in some cocoons that didn't hatch. So they're not alive right now, but you can see how small they are. They're about the size of a gnat. Um, and in the next couple of weeks, they're gonna become really active and they're looking for the mason bees that are developing. All of our nesting materials are designed to help prevent mono from being able to attack the mason bees, but there's no sure way to keep them out because they're very sneaky. They are looking for any small crack or weakness in the side of a nesting hole. So it's better to just remove the mason bee nesting holes out of the bee house and that keeps the mono from being able to find the mason bees. Removing the nesting materials will also help protect the developing larva from birds and another common thing that likes to find the nesting holes is ants. There's two different ways that you can remove the nesting holes. If you have loose nesting holes like our natural reeds and our bee tubes or our bee tubes with inserts, what you can do with those is as soon as they're filled, you can remove them. But the best time to remove a loose nesting hole is at night so that um, in the morning, the remaining nesting bees can, they'll come out and they'll um, turn around and look at their nesting house and see what it looks like today. For the natural reeds, um, something that you can do to make sure that the reed actually has something in it is get a skinny stick and use it as a gauge. So I've got this nice little bamboo skewer and one of the reeds doesn't have mud at the end but I can see a lot of pollen and so if I measure the skewer against the reed I can see that if it was empty I could put it in all the way to there um, but if there's something in here it's going to stick out a bit so there's actually something nesting inside so I want to save this and protect it um, this is a good example of something that you might think doesn't have any bees inside of it, but you actually want to protect it. For um, storing the filled nesting holes, we want to store them with the mud side facing up so that the egg stays on top of its pollen loaf. So I'm going to take all of the reeds out and to keep them facing up, I'm going to store them in a nice glass jar very tall. I also want to put the nesting tray into the guard bag. When we store the nesting tray we're going to do the same thing where we want to store it with the mud side facing up, the front side, so that the eggs stay on top of the pollen loaf. So once I've got everything in the bag I'm going to cinch the top closed and tie it shut. So once you've got your nesting materials in the bag, you can bring it into an unheated and unair conditioned garage or shed. You want somewhere that stays about similar to outdoor temperatures. So there's a couple of benefits of the Bee Guard bag. It's made of a really fine mesh that the mono wasps and the ants can't get through. And it's also breathable because the pollen loaf that the mason bee larvae are eating is very moist and it needs to be able to let go of its moisture over the summer. And it's a, it's a generous size so you can fit a lot of nesting materials into one bag. So after the first couple of weeks that you set the bag into your garage, you want to check on it every so often to look to see if any mono that got into the nesting materials before you were able to take them out of the bee house actually attacked um, and developed within a mason bee larva. That, so um, you'll see them fly up to the top of the bag and you can just kind of squish them and that will help reduce, that will keep them from being able to attack more of the developing larva. 
So if you leave your nesting holes in the bee house over the summer, there are other hole nesting bees and wasps that may be attracted to the nesting holes and move in, but that makes it difficult to manage their cocoons. I suggest providing a fresh set of eight millimeter nesting holes for those bees over the summer.